Hi, the SI Meteorologist. Paul Dorian here on Thursday, February 27th. A lot to talk about today. We have a strong cold frontal system moving into the Mid-Atlantic region for this afternoon. There will be increasing winds later on today, possible snow showers, especially from the Pennsylvania-Maryland border on north. Behind the frontal system, Siberian air will pour into the region overnight. Temperatures will drop to the single digits in many areas along the I-95 corridor and struggle to pass 20 or 22 degrees or so tomorrow afternoon, which is some 20 to 25 degrees below normal for this time of the year. Then attention turns to the west as a couple of California storms will traverse the country and the first one will weaken as it moves into the eastern states by the time Saturday rolls around, maybe a couple of rain or snow showers on Saturday. But the second, more uh, impressive storm system will cause big problems in much of the northeastern part of the country late Sunday night and Monday. We'll get into that in a moment or two. Here's the latest infrared satellite imagery loop from the SSEC Wisconsin website. First of all, a lot of moisture across the Gulf of Mexico uh, pushing uh, well s south and east of the I-95 corridor here from D.C. to New York City. But notice this little spin in the atmosphere over the eastern Great Lakes. This is associated with a strong upper level feature and a strong cold frontal system that is dropping south and east. And it'll be definitely noticeable around here this afternoon when that front arrives because winds will gust up to 35 or 40 miles per hour. Again, there can be some snow showers and maybe even from the northern suburbs of Philadelphia, north and east, a, a couple of heavier snow squalls. Certainly, some snow squalls are possible. Upstate Pennsylvania, for example, in the Poconos and the mountains of central Pennsylvania, as this Siberian air mass finally arrives in the Mid Atlantic region and temperatures absolutely plunge tonight down to the single digits in most locations. Out in the west, we have storm number one, this little spin in the atmosphere right here, moving into northern California. A significant rainfall today throughout the state of California and on its heels is a second and even stronger storm system out over the central Pacific. In fact, let's take a look right now at the satellite image showing that second California storm. And here's the latest infrared satellite loop, uh, satellite image of the central part of the Pacific. And here is that second storm system right here. California right in this region right here getting hit right now by storm number one. This second storm is very impressive. Notice the long fetch of tropical moisture feeding into this. Probably low pressure centered right around here with the frontal system extending out like that. And by the way, on its heels is another storm system we may have to deal with here in the eastern U.S. later next week. But more on that as the days progress. But a second very impressive storm system right now over the central Pacific could bring Big problems to the northeastern part of the country come late Sunday night and Monday. Well, here's a look at the current surface map, and here is that frontal system right now cutting across Ohio. Just brutal cold air already below zero in places like Madison, Wisconsin, and they could go down to 10 degrees below zero tonight. Chicago, b uh, bitter cold with below zero temperatures. This air mass originated in Siberia across the North Pole and will arrive in the Mid-Atlantic region later on in the day and plunge temperatures overnight. Meanwhile, storm system number one out here in California causing the, the first significant rains throughout the state in more than a month or so, uh, again on the order of two or three inches over the next 24 hours. And then the next storm moves in for the Friday-Saturday time frame with another few inches of rain likely throughout much of the state. And that second storm is the one that goes all the way across the country and causes big problems in the mid-Atlantic and northeastern U.S. come late Sunday night and Monday. Well, let's take a look at some GFS forecast maps at the surface for both uh, the frontal passes later today and tonight that's bringing in that brutal cold air mass for tonight and Friday. And then we'll focus in on the early next week event, looking at forecast maps from uh, for Sunday into uh, Monday, late Monday. And all of this is from last night's Zero Z GFS model run. This is the forecast map for early this afternoon. By this time, the frontal system will be right over the I-95 corridor from D.C. to Philadelphia, New York City. Expect winds to be noticeably stronger this afternoon, gusting up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. 
a lot of precipitation in the mountains and some of this may very well make it to the suburbs of Philadelphia for example especially the northern suburbs in the form of snow showers and from maybe the Bucks County north and east there can even be a heavier snow squall or two maybe a snow shower makes it all the way down to DC but the most likely area for snow showers associated with this strong frontal passage will be north of the Pennsylvania Maryland border from the northern suburbs of Philadelphia all the way across to New York City the best chance will be in the New York City region as far as the I-95 corridor region is concerned and then temperatures just plunge tonight breeze will continue wind chills will be even lower well below zero later on tonight and tomorrow throughout much of the I-95 Carter and single digits for lows late tonight. In fact, let's take a look at a late night forecast map. And here's the forecast map for later tonight. By this time, high pressure is situated over the Great Lakes. Still a strong breeze overnight tonight, but the pre precipitation in the form of snow showers is on out of here. Skies will clear this evening and temperatures will drop like a rock again, down into the single digits in many locations by tomorrow morning. And finally, as far as this first event is concerned, here's the forecast map for early tomorrow afternoon, Friday afternoon. High pressure sitting right on top of the region. That wouldn't be so bad if, if not for the fact that this high pressure really originated over the North Pole just a few days ago. So it will be brutally cold tomorrow despite some sunshine. Some 20 to 25 degrees below normal for this time of the year from D.C. to Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, and even lower wind chill uh, values. High temperatures struggling to reach 20 degrees uh, in the Philadelphia metropolitan region, maybe the mid to upper 20s down in D.C., just a brutally cold air mass for tonight and Friday here in the Mid-Atlantic region. That does move out of here rather, rather quickly on Saturday. It will not be nearly as cold on Saturday with high temperatures well up in the 30s throughout the uh, Mid-Atlantic region. Well, let's now look ahead at the uh, big storm potential for early next week. We'll look at from last night's Zero Z GFS model run, the forecast maps were Sunday morning, Sunday evening, then Monday morning, and Monday evening, 12-hour increments. This is Sunday morning. Now, a couple of major players here. First of all, a very, very strong Arctic high-pressure system dropping into the southwestern uh, part of Canada with a piece of that Arctic high moving all the way into the New England region. All of this is just brutally cold Arctic air setting up to the north of the I-95 corridor on Sunday morning. There will be a frontal system sliding uh, in this fashion and located in this uh, area come a Sunday morning and this it divides this brutally cold Arctic air to the north with milder air to the south. Notice a lot of the precipitation is light out here over the Ohio Valley. Let's now jump ahead to the Sunday evening forecast map. And here's the forecast map for Sunday evening. Again, very strong Arctic high with brutally cold air centered out over the south central part of Canada and a piece of that strong high breaks off and moves into New England. That's a very key player here with uh, notice kind of a cold air damming situation starting to set up here when you see kind of kinks in the isobar isobar pattern. What that indicates is cold air is moving in at low levels south and east of the Appalachian Mountains and again that could be setting us up for big problems in this Sunday night Monday time frame in terms of low level cold air and it's possible that it'll be warm enough in the upper part of the atmosphere for uh, an area of significant icing to occur Sunday night and Monday. Still the details need to be ironed out in terms of where that is. A couple other things to point out. There will, will uh, not be significant precipitation during the day on Sunday. There can be a little bit of snow or rain in the DC area, uh, maybe even a, a little bit of a mixed sleet and snow in some areas, but not a big deal in terms of precipitation during the day on Sunday. The heaviest stuff holds off until overnight on Sunday and continues on Monday. All of this is moisture from that second California storm that moves in from the west and pounds California in the Friday, Saturday time period and then moves all the way across the country. Just uh, a, a tremendous amount of moisture setting up here in the south central part of the U.S. by 
late Sunday, early uh, Sunday night. At the same time, brutally cold air situated just to our nor north. Not a good combination. Let's now jump ahead to Monday morning. And here's the forecast map for Monday morning. Still high pressure situated up to the north all the way across from south central Canada into southeastern Canada. This is a crucial player here because this is anchoring that brutally cold air mass. The front has slid to the south here now uh, down even south and east of the uh, DC metro region here during the day on Monday. Basically colder air will be slowly filtering in and it's possible the precipitation begins as rain in the DC metro region changes to ice during the day on Monday and ultimately that could change to all snow. From the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, odds favor frozen precipitation, perhaps a significant snow event in uh, the suburbs of Philadelphia. It's still too early to call. That could be significant snow and or ice. It's the last thing we want to hear uh, about in southeastern part of Pennsylvania, but an ice storm is on the table here. Places like the Poconos, State College, very likely to get a significant snowfall a foot or more as possible in, in the mountainous areas upstate Pennsylvania. So again, heavy snow, State College, the Poconos, the I-95 corridor, the Battle Zone, places like southern New Jersey down maybe the southern part of the Delmarva Peninsula, primarily rain. So somewhere in between there, there will be a uh, significant icing event, and just on the northwest side of that icing event will be a significant snow event. And finally, here's the forecast map for Monday evening. By this time, the low pressure moves to the south and east. The cold air continues to filter in from the north and west to the south and east. Much of the precipitation changes over to snow by this time, even down at the D.C. metro region as the storm pulls away to the north and east. So big problems coming late Sunday night and Monday. Still a little too early to, to say who gets the big snows, who gets the big ice, uh, ice uh, event, but uh, certainly big potential problems for Sunday night and Monday. But first, we have to get through this Siberian Express. Siberian air mass drops temperatures down in the single digits overnight tonight and a brutally cold day on Friday. Stay tuned to the SIWeather.com for updates later today. That's it for now on the SI Meteorologist Paul Dorian.